start the recording. Good morning, grade 10. I can only see a few students here. I can only see Margie and Dimitri, right? Um, by the way, the coverage, I'll just give first the coverage for your third master test, right? With the third master test, science 10, okay? First is the human reproductive system, male reproductive system, testosterone, okay, sperm, sperm challenge, female reproductive system, menstrual cycle, okay, ovarian cycle, uterine cycle, hormone feedback and pregnancy, and of course, sexually transmitted diseases, right? So again, your exam, your third master test is this 21st and 22nd of February. Okay, that's Monday and Tuesday next week. So we need to finish the discussion this week. And you need also to settle, settle your account as soon as possible so that we will not have problems during the examination day, right? Let's move now to the female reproductive system, okay? The female reproductive system performs the following functions. Number one, production of female sex hormones, okay? Are you familiar with these female sex hormones? The estrogen and the progesterone. So these are the female sex hormones. Let's take a look at later. Let's discuss later what are these hormones, right? Production of egg cells, okay, in the ovary, okay? Female has two ovaries, okay? The left and the right, okay? And of course, the production of egg cell is one at a time, okay? One egg cell per month. Receive the male sex organ for the transfer of sperm. This is in the um, this is in the reproductive stage. Okay, receive the, the male sex organ for the transfer of sperms, right? And the fourth one is the protection and nourishment of the developing embryo in the uterus. Okay, let's take a look at also what are the the, the things that happen or things that may be happening in the uterine wall, in the uterus, while the embryo is implanted there, okay? What gives nourishment also to the developing embryo? Okay, again, first is the production of female sex hormones in the, in the ovary. Second is production of egg cells, also in the ovary. Third is re receive the male sex organ for the transfer of sperms. And the fourth one is protection and nourishment of the developing embryo. Okay. Female reproductive system includes ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, and the vagina. Okay. The pair of ovaries, okay, lying on the left and the right or right and the left depressions of the upper pelvic cavity produce immature egg cells. Okay, the mature egg, the mature egg is swept by the tiny finger-like projection. These are cilia. These are the, the organs of locomotion, okay? We have two organs of locomotion in the human body. First is the cilia, it looks like a hair. It looks like hair-like projections, okay? The second one is the flagellum, okay? Or flagella, which is actually found in your sperm, okay? The tail, okay? This is organs for locomotion of the oviducts or fallopian tubes. The egg moves along the tube with the help of tiny hair or cilia that line the fallopian tubes, okay? These tubes extend until the uterus. The uterus is an inverted pear-shaped muscular organ where the embryo may attach to the endometrium, okay? Endo means inner, inside, okay? Endometrium is the covering inside, okay? Covering inside the uterus, endometrial lining or endometrium. It's the inner wall, okay? When successful implantation happens, a female is considered pregnant, okay? The neck of the uterus leading to the vaginal canal is the cervix, okay? 
it dilates or opens prior to the female's delivery. Okay? The vagina is a long elastic muscular canal where the menstrual blood, this is where, take, a look, take note, this is where menstrual blood flows. Okay? Menstrual blood and tissues are expelled out okay, from the body. The walls of the vagina provide lubrication and receive the penis during copulation or during sexual intercourse. Okay? This organ also expands during intercourse and childbirth. Okay? This is the reason why if you're going to look at the, the anatomy of the female reproductive system, it is quite um, really complicated because of this. Okay? And of course, what makes a, 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 a female, what makes a, a, a woman or a female, a womb with a man, okay, or a man with a womb, is just because it has a womb, okay? That's why it's called woman, right? And this has a lot of, um, has a lot of functions, of course. This also contains a lot of chemical reactions in the body. That is why there are a lot of cases that women has different moods. We, we usually call them as mood swings. Okay? This is because of these chemical um, processes inside the body. Right? The hymen is the membrane that surrounds and partially covers the opening of the vagina. Okay. If you're going to look at the anatomy of the female reproductive system, this is the, the layout, right? You can, you, can on, you can actually see the uterus here. The uterine wall is inside. So this is the uterine wall, which the uterine cycle happens, right? This is the fallopian tube, which contains cilia or ciliated, ciliated membrane, cilia. And of course, the ovaries, the left and the right ovaries, okay? Which actually, what? The source of your female sex hormones, progesterone and estrogen, okay? The cervix. The vaginal canal, which extends to the external part of the female reproductive system. This is the internal part, by the way. Okay. Did I include? Yeah, it's in here. So on the on the other side, you can actually see. Although this is the cross section, okay, but you can actually see the external part. Although this is the internal part, okay. The external part is in here. If you're going to look at it, it has labia minora, the inner covering of the vaginal canal or the vagina, labia mihora, or the outer covering, okay, the clitoris, okay, hymen is inside, okay, in, inside the labia minora. These are the, by the way, Labia minora and labia mihora, these are the, the protective covering of the vagina, right? Why should this be protected? Because this is really sensitive. This is really sensitive to bacteria, sensitive to fungus, okay? Okay, sure. Where does the urine comes out? Okay, urine comes out in the urinary system of the female um, body okay, is actually in the clitoris or clitoral line, this one. This is where urine actually pass through. Remember the urethra? This is the passage of urine and your urinary bladder. Okay. So the urinary system and the reproductive system in a female body is not actually or it's not directly connected compared to the, the male reproductive system or the male's body. Okay, the, you can ask questions. You can ask questions anytime. Just let me know, all right? Okay. 
Again, this is the inner, okay? This is the inner part of the female reproductive system. And this is the outer, this one. Outer part, okay? Rectum. This is actually connected to the large intestine. Okay. Actually, what happened here is this is a cross-section. Oh, no, it's longitudinal section of the female body. As you can see, okay? You can actually see the large intestine, okay? The female reproductive system and the urinary system. Okay. And the openings, we have three openings as the outer, okay, the outer part of the female reproductive system has three openings. Again, rectum, or this is anus, anal sphincter, anus, okay. Vagina, this opening is the vagina. And the last opening, is the clitoris or clitorial opening. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? Question, question. By the way, this is longitudinal section, not cross section. The menstrual cycle. Okay. Female sex hormone controls the secondary sex characteristic as well as the ovarian and uterine cycle. Okay, similar to male, females also secrete follicle stimulating hormone. Remember the FH, FSH, the female stimulating hormone, okay, and the luteinizing hormone, LH, as directed by, by the pituitary gland during puberty. Okay, this instruction signals the start of the puberty. That includes the development of the secondary sex characteristic in female, okay? And the onset of menstruation, okay? Let's take a look at later. What are the importance of this menstruation? What are the importance of having, again, um, the egg, the, the fully developed egg in the system, right? A female experiences body changes even before the first menstruation. This is called menarche or menarch. These female secondary sex characteristic include development, the development of the breasts, growth of the axillary underarm hair, okay, pubic hair, rounded contours brought about by the widespread layer of fat in the area like the abdomen, okay, hips and thighs, widening of the hips in preparation for childbirth, and the development of higher pitch voice. Okay. At puberty, the pituitary gland starts a series of hormonal changes. Okay. Hormonal changes that render a woman fertile. Okay. Or capable of pregnancy. These hormonal changes and the effects they produce is called the menstrual cycle. Okay. While the length of this cycle varies, the typical cycle is about 28 days or a month, okay? We usually um, have this 28 days, okay? During these days, changes in both the ovary and the uterus takes place or take place. This is the reason why um, usually female have had mood swings, and this is also the reason why there are some changes, okay? There are some changes in the physical characteristic as well as in the um, in the behavioral side of female in this cycle okay this is because of this cycle let's take a look at the ovarian cycle this is the cycle of the ovary okay at the beginning of the cycle the pituitary gland secretes increased amount of follicle stimulating hormone your fsh and allows an ovarian follicle to mature, okay? As the follicle cells develop, they secrete the female sex hormone, estrogen. Oh, the first one is estrogen, right? The multiplication of follicle cells signals an increased level of estrogen in the blood, okay? And the pituitary gland secretes another hormone, the luteinizing hormone, together with, this is FSH, brings about the final maturation of the follicle 
which stimulates the ovulation and release a mature egg or releases the mature egg. Okay, this is the time now that you actually feel different a difference in your body. You feel that uh, you feel something like um, you're really beautiful, okay? Beautiful in the in, in your side. This is because of the hormone, okay? Female hormones, okay? Usually um, triggers behavioral patterns. It also triggers um, a, a sometimes, okay, a good mood, okay, in the during the start of the ovarian cycle. This is in the ovarian cycle, okay. Ovulation usually occurs on the fourteenth day of the cycle. Take note again. Ovulation usually occurs on the fourteenth day of the cycle. The egg is a vi is vi viable for fertilization within 24 hours from its release. Still under the influence of luteinizing hormone, okay, the cells of the ruptured follicle develop into a yellow body called corpus lithium. Okay? Corpus lithium is actually developed okay, in the ovary. Okay, as you can see, it transforms into yellowish. Okay, these are the follicle. And this is your cor corpus lithium. Okay. I can only see Margie and Dimitri now. Jillian is out. Okay, let's move forward. This yellow body then produces more estrogen and another female sex hormone, progesterone. Okay. So the second hormone in the female body is the progesterone. Okay. Both hormones prepare the uterine wall for possible implantation of a fertilized egg. Okay. The rise level of estrogen and progesterone exerts a feedback of control over pituitary gland and inhibit the secretion of Luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. With the drop of amount of these two hormones, the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone, the corpus lithium is derived or deprived of hormones that maintains it. Okay, if there is no hormone that maintains the corpus lithium, what happens to the corpus lithium? The corpus lithium begins to degenerate, and therefore it is it it influences in the progesterone level affect the endometrial wall in a domino effect, okay? Again, degenerate. If corpus lithium degener degenerate, but degeneration means what? When you hear the word degeneration, what comes into your mind? Everybody, are you still with me? Okay, what is degeneration? Degeneration means it actually like when something devolves. Come again, Dimitri. Degeneration. What do you mean by the word degeneration? Something based devolves. Come again. When something devolves. All right, correct. When something devolves. What else? When something is dropping. That's degeneration. Decelerating. Okay. When something is dropping, it influences the progesterone level. And it will affect the endometrial wall. What will happen to the endometrial wall? Degenerate also. Okay. In as a domino effect. So this is now the start of the menstrual cycle. Okay. Let's move now to the uterine cycle as a domino effect, okay, of the uh, degeneration of the corpus lithium. Let's move now to the uterine cycle. Okay. While the events are taking place in the female ovary, a series of changes also happens in the uterus as a consequence of these hormones. Okay. 
with the low levels of progesterone and the surface of the endometrium, okay? You remember the endometrial lining, the degeneration of corpus lithium triggers again the degeneration also of the endometrial lining, okay? Or the endometrium. Or the uterine wall begins to disintegrate and blood vessels would rupture, okay? Blood and some accompanying endometrial tissues flow out of the vagina in the process called menstruation. This is now the menstruation, okay? Some of my students actually ask me about, sir, is the menstrual blood um, dirty? What do you think? What do you think, Margie? Is the menstrual blood dirty? Sure. Is it? Any idea? Margie, are you still with me? Are you still with us? Margie? Okay. Is the menstrual blood dirty? What do you think? You don't really know? The answer is no. It is composed of iron and of course dead or or these are blood, pure blood with some tissues. Okay. What happens here is this is the what? The disintegrated. Okay, because of the action of the lowering of the hormone, the uterine wall disintegrate. Okay, the corpus lithium disintegrate, and these are now the what? The ruptured wall or ruptured uterine wall with accompanying blood. Okay, this blood is not dirty. Okay, what makes it dirty is that it actually exposed, or when you expose it, in an open air, it becomes dirty. Why? Because you're exposing it in an open air with a lot of bacteria. Aside from that, if you expose blood, okay, without any anticoagulant, okay, it will just coagulate by itself. It will bump to itself. Okay, once it bumps to itself, it coagulates. Sure, what is coagulate? Are you familiar with coagulate? Coagulate means mubagtok, mugahi. That's coagulation because of the bumping of this blood, okay, blood cells, the red blood cells. And this blood or this menstrual blood is rich in iron. This is the reason why when you're having your menstruation, okay, girls' tendency is what you will have you will have a lot of pantal pantal okay lagum lagum this is because of what the withdrawal of iron okay this is because of the withdrawal of iron once iron is withdrawn in the body you can actually experience what iron deficiency anemia this is common in Female. That is why the, 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 the medicine for this is a supplement of or supplementation of iron in the case of or in, in, in the case of what? What supplement? The ferrosulfate. This is the reason why if you're going to consult into your doctor, Girls, the doctor usually give you ferrosulfate. This is the to what? To, to give again back, okay? To supply back the lost iron in the process. That's the reason behind. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Okay. Again, please ask questions. Even in the middle of the discussion, it's okay, right? 
the menstrual phase lasts about five days. What happened next in, after five days? Okay. After the menstru menstrual period, okay, after five days, the endometrium starts to build up due to the increased amount again. Because this is a cycle, there is an increased amount again of estrogen by the developing follicle or follicles in the, in the ovary. This is the proliferative phase of the uterine cycle, which lasts from 6 to 14 days. Okay, The formation of the corpus lithium, okay, the formation of the corpus lithium and the secretion progesterone trigger the endometrium to double the, in thickness and prepare itself for the developing embryo. Okay, The uterine glands become mature and, the, and produce a thick secretion. Hence, the term secretory phase of the uterine cycle begins on the 15th day of the cycle until, okay, before the onset of the next menstrual phase. Okay, we have two cycles in the, in the ovary or ovarian cycle. We have the proliferative phase, okay, which lasts from 6 to 14 days. The formation of the corpus lithium and secretion progesterone trigger the endometrium endometrial lining to thicken, okay, to prepare itself for the developing embryo, okay. The uterine glands become mature and produce thick secretion. Hence, the term secretory phase of the uterine cycle begins on the 15th. Okay, secretory phase. What's with the secretory phase? Okay, it is in the 15th day of the cycle until the onset of the next menstrual phase. This cycle, however, may be interrupted by stress, health, Pregnancy, but if pregnancy does not occur, the cycle begins anew. Okay, right. Pro proliferative phase and the secretory phase. Okay, this is now the, the layout of the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. Okay, this is the ovarian cycle, the cycle of the ovary. Okay. So the follicle, remember the follicle, which, which will be actually um, goes into developing phase, not goes into corpus lithium and releases egg in the process, okay, with the help of mutinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone, okay, follicular phase, okay, this is ovulation, it releases egg cell. Okay, and again, it will just develop into corpus lithium and degenerate by itself. Once it degenerates, it actually reacts with or it will actually have an effect on the uterus, hence the uterine cycle. Okay, the low level of estrogen will actually degenerate okay, the walls of the uteri uterus or uterine wall. Okay. The rise of progesterone and estrogen will increase also or thicken the walls of the uterus or uterine wall or the endometrial lining of the uterus. Do you have any questions so far? Questions, questions? Question? Okay, hormone feedback and pregnancy. Okay, when a sperm cell successfully penetrates their nuclei or nuclei fuse or nucleus, a zygote or fertilized egg is formed. Okay, a fertilization, a fertilization membrane also develops to prevent other sperms to further penetrate on the egg. Okay, it actually covers. Okay, this um, fertilization membrane covers the egg as a protection in order for um, in order for it not to be penetrated again by another sperm. Okay, this process whereby the sperm nucleus and the ovum ovum's nucleus unite. Okay, is called fertilization. Okay, it especially takes place when the egg is traveling along in the oviduct or fallopian tube. Okay, it will take about seven to ten days for an egg, or fertilized or not, to reach the uterus. Okay, there are some cases that it cannot actually reach the uterus. If 
it will not reach the uterus tendencies, you will have what? It will develop in the fallopian tube. Okay? It will develop in the fallopian tube and hence it will actually die. Okay? The developing, the, 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 the zygote there will eventually die. Okay? What do you call that case? Have you heard about that case? Huh? What do you call that case? Maybe you heard about this. Okay, this is common. Or well, it, it, it is not, but usually there are some cases that it is really happening. It is called ectopic pregnancy. Okay, ectopic pregnancy, when um the 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 developing embryo or zygote, okay, actually develops in the fallopian tube. Okay, it actually travels from seven days to ten days. But if it cannot actually move, it will just develop in the fallopian tube, and hence it will become, or you will have an ectopic pregnancy. Okay. The zygote there will eventually die, and, you, and it needs to be removed. Okay. Upon successful implantation of a developing embryo in the endometrium or endometrial lining, the developing embryo and the uterine lining jointly form a special organ called placenta. This is an organ, okay, that gives nourishment to the embryo. It is actually attached in the endometrial lining of the uterus or uterine wall, okay? This provides nourishment to the embryo or for the embryo as well as secretion of the hormone called the human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, okay? Take, a, take note about the terminologies about the hormone. This is human chorionic gonadotropin which is related to the luteinizing hormone, okay? Since they act as the same, on the, the same receptor. Recall that luteinizing hormone maintains corpus lithium. With the corpus lithium intact, progesterone production is maintained and the uterine wall will not break down, okay? Since it will not break down, tendency is it will actually nourish or it will actually give nourishment or the... the, the Placenta will give nourishment to the developing embryo. Hence, a pregnant woman will not menstruate because of HCG, okay? Or human chorionic gonadotropin. HCG passes in the urine, okay? It is the same hormone detected in the pregnancy test kits, okay? This is the reason why you can actually detect or pregnancy, you can actually detect if you are pregnant using a test kit because, again, the HCG will pass to urine, okay? The human chorionic gonadotropin, okay? The embryo is, is abnormal or it dies. HCG will drop. If the embryo is abnormal or it dies, HCG will drop and the endometrium or endometrial lining, if there is a dropping of HCG, the endometrial lining of the uterine wall will disintegrate, causing women to have miscarriage. Let's take a look at sexually transmitted diseases. Do you have any questions so far? Question, question. Okay. I will, I will um, upload this in the LMS and please review, right? Sexually transmitted diseases, mainly sexually transmitted diseases or STD. These are infectious disease resulting from sexual activities have been reported even among teens who become sexually active, okay? STD, choose no one, okay? All kinds of people regardless of gender, age, or economic status. And of course, educa educational background can be affected, okay? They are caused either by bacteria, virus, or parasite, okay? Those are the three um causes of a STD, okay? We have bacterial, viral, 
and parasitic. Okay? STD symptoms are not always obvious. These are asymptomatic. If one has STD symptom or has been exposed to STD, he or she must see a doctor right away. Okay? Some STD can be treated easily, but others require more complex and long-term treatment. Okay? When left untreated, some of these diseases may lead to serious health problems such as HIV, which affects fertility. Okay? Let's discuss thorough um, these sexual transmitted diseases by next meeting. 